your kind. Places is Miss Smiley's Cafe. And today she was holding a fancy dress party. It's looking wonderful, Miss Smiley. All the fun of the fair. It was a medieval fairground theme, so everyone was going to dress up the way they did long, long ago. Ta da! What do you think of my medieval costume, CJ? Tis most becoming, Mistress Smiley. Thou is most kind, my lord. <laughs> you are so medieval. Oh, heck. I've got to go and get the medieval bread out of the medieval oven. <laughs> yes, this was the day for Mistress Smiley's medieval fairground fun. Back at the mill on the marsh, Auntie Jules had been busy making costumes for all of us. I was dressed as a knight, and Elsie was my dragon, and Grandpa was making up a medieval story. And Norbert, the brave knight, saddled his trusty steed, Humperdinck, and galloped towards the castle to come before the king. Just then, the doorbell went. Who can that be? I'm not expecting anyone. Listen. We listened and heard. Of course we can take her with us to the party. Come in, Belinda Lucinda. <gasps> Belinda Lucinda. Oh, no. Belinda Lucinda is a really bossy girl who lives nearby. Look who it is, Belinda Lucinda. And very lovely you look, too. Yes, well, I'm a queen. Mm, yes, I can see that. Belinda's coming with us to the party because her mum's been called mm. to a very urgent meeting. Mummy's got a really important job. Yes, yes, I know. Um, we were making up a little story. Why don't you join us? I don't want to be in a stupid baby story. Not a very real horse, is it? Only a bit of fairground fun, Belinda Lucinda. Are you going to the party? Uh, no. I think I might be having a little lie down. Yes, I suppose you're too old for fairground fun, aren't you? Oh, yes. Just then, Uncle CJ came up the stairs. Green sleeves is my heart of gold. Oh, a medieval minstrel, marvellous. And who but my lady green sleeves? <laughs> I've just been helping Miss Smiley. The cafe looks amazing. So medievally. I think it's all silly. Oh, come on, Belinda Lucinda, cheer up. What about Jules? What's she going as? I'm a medieval fortune teller. And look, I've made a crystal ball out of an old fishbowl. What's inside? Ah, that's the flower of the future. My new hobby, making paper flowers. Does it actually do anything? Well, well, yes. If I bend down, it whispers to me. It tells me things. It tells me what's going to happen in the future. Ha! That's ridiculous. Right, we're all ready, so let's get into Campo. We have to go to Mr Mentor's lighthouse so Jules can give him his costume. Come on, everyone. See you later, Grandpa. This medieval fairground thing better be good or else. Queen Belinda Lucinda is going to ruin the day unless we do something. <gasps> Not the shrinking cat, Grandpa! <laughs> Catch me if you can. When my grandpa shrinks, everyone thinks he's gone for a little lie down. But he gets up to all kinds of mischief. And his magic can make things go. Like the Captain Dumbledore's spaceship and the Sunny Sands train. And he can hide in teeny tiny places. And today he's hidden here. Boo! In my pocket. Quick, Grandpa. Just then, this happened. You're talking to a toy ostrich. How babyish. Your uncle says hurry up. Come on, 
Hurry, hurry, hurry! We had to go, but we knew Grandpa would find a way of coming too. Right. Mrs. Ostrich to the rescue. <laughs> so we all got into Campo, and Aunt Jewel said, I can't wait to see what Mr. Mentor's invented for the party. And Belinda Lucinda said, Well, if you ask your flower of the future, then she'll tell you, won't she? At the lighthouse, Mr. Mentor wanted to show us what he'd invented for Mistress Smiley's Fairground Fun. Now, this is my trumpety trumpet. Isn't it Wizzy Woodles? Mr. Mentor doesn't just invent things, he invents words too. What's he meant to do? No, well, it's meant to make this noise. <laughs> and when it does, it will be spectacular. <laughs> yeah, really. It'll never work. <laughs> Belinda Lucinda was being so rude. Uh, oh, well, now then, there's this. <laughs> My medieval lollipopper. If you pull that lever, then a lolly should pop. So, I pulled the lever, but nothing happened. Oh, no. <laughs> None of your inventions ever work. Well, they will eventually. They just need a bit of time to think about it. Now, I wonder which one will be the first. Oh, Mistress Fortune can tell you that. Her flower of the future knows what's going to happen. Really? Oh, Jules, do show. <laughs> It's just a bit of fun. <laughs> so everyone gathered round and Aunt Jules talked to her crystal ball. Just then, this happened. Nobody saw him flying in on Mrs Ostrich. Auntie Jules started talking to her flower. Flower of the future, flower all-knowing, which invention will get going? Well, which one? Which one will start first? Ha! She doesn't know. The lollipopper. Yes, the medieval lollipopper is going to work, Mr. Mentor. <laughs> as soon as Grandpa heard this, he ran across the floor, climbed up onto the counter, and got into the back of the lollipopper machine. Suddenly, the helmet began to shudder, and the visor opened, and the lolly shot out. <gasps> Brilliant! <laughs> I've no idea how I knew that. <laughs> Time to be off to the cafe now. We'll help you with your inventions. Perhaps they'll all work once we're at the cafe. And I must get my costume on. See you there! Grandpa quickly got out of the lollipopper and jumped onto the floor and set off on Mrs Ostrich. At the party, everyone loved Mr Mentor's inventions. Aren't they lovely and very medieval-looking? Pity they don't work. The lollipopper works, fluke. Ta-da! I certainly have, Mistress Fortune. Straight from the court of the Queen. And all my inventions look wonderful. Oh, no. I knew Grandpa would be on his way. And sure enough, he got off Mrs Ostrich and climbed up the table leg and right up onto the trumpety trumpet. And just in time, because Belinda Lucinda said... So how's the silly trumpet thing going to make a noise then, huh? Without her seeing, Grandpa got behind it and trumpeted away. <laughs> like that, I guess. There she blows! <laughs> Put the lovely inventions in the storeroom so there's more room for these. And while everyone made room for Miss Smiley's cakes, Grandpa got down off the trumpety trumpet, he jumped onto the floor and ran to find me. He had a plan. Grandpa always has a plan. You've got to get me inside Auntie Jules' crystal ball and then ask Belinda Lucinda to take it into the storeroom. OK. So I picked Grandpa up and took him to Auntie Jules' crystal ball. He hid right under the flower. Can you take this to the storeroom? OK. Maybe it'll tell me my fortune. Well, little flower, what's going to happen next then, eh? And Grandpa said... I can tell you exactly. What? You're going to start to be nice. What? And you're going to say sorry to Mr Mentor, Miss Smiley and Jules. Right. 
and then you're going to start to enjoy the party and let everyone else enjoy it too. Okay, okay, I will. Promise me. I promise. Hi. The flower of the future is amazing. I'm going to go and tell your Auntie Jules how clever she is. Done. Get me out of here, Elsie. So, I got Grandpa out and put him in my pocket. When Belinda Lucinda had said sorry to everyone for being so rude, she started to enjoy the party. I found your ostrich, Elsie. Sorry I was a bit hurried about it. It's actually really sweet. <laughs> <laughs> When the medieval party was over, we all came home. We ran upstairs and Elsie put Grandpa down. Come off, Grandpa, quick! Oh. I'm glad you came. Belinda Lucinda was going to ruin the whole thing. And I couldn't have stopped her without both of you helping me. And what do we call that? Teamwork! <laughs> Oh, Grandpa, you missed such a good party. Even Belinda Lucinda had a nice time. And guess what? She thought my flower of the future was actually real. <laughs> she actually did. <laughs> oh, I do wish you'd been there to see it, Grandpa. 